Every good image needs a clear subject, but how do we make it stand out on a gloomy day like this? Let me show you with this Lightroom tutorial. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video and now let's begin. So this long exposure scene looks pretty good. The problem is, the subject is way too dark and it kind of blends in with the rest of the image. We don't want that. Luckily for us, this problem is easily fixed with just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments. And the very first thing we need to do are the basic adjustments, fixing the exposure of the image globally. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which as you can see already brightens up the darkest parts of the image slightly. However, this is not enough, so what I want to do next is to just bring up the exposure. And as I'm pushing the exposure, I'm always keeping a close eye on the histogram since I don't want to introduce any overexposure. Still, increasing the exposure like that, we will lose a lot of detail in the sky, which we also don't want. So to counter that problem, I'm going to bring down the highlights until we do have some nicely structured clouds up here. Perfect. Again, taking a look at the histogram, you can see there is a little bit of underexposure, which we want to fix by bringing up the blacks. And then we can bring up the whites to add a little more contrast to this image. Again, just keeping a close eye on the histogram to not introduce too much overexposure. Wonderful. At this point, we can clearly see the image has a very strong blue color cast. I do kind of like it, but I want to reduce it a little bit. A neat trick to neutralize any color cast is take a look at the histogram. You can see there are different colored peaks. As we shift the temperature slider more towards the warmer side, you can see those colored peaks are getting closer and closer together. By overlapping the peaks like this, we have neutralized the color cast and we kind of have a proper white balance going on. I think for this image, it really doesn't look good, so I don't want to go as far with the temperature. Let's bring it down a bit so we do have some cold color tones left in here. Perfect. At this point, we can also introduce some texture. Then let's bring down the clarity because I want this image to have a very soft look. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same effect and then bring up the vibrance for more saturation. So with step one of the post-processing, we have adjusted the overall exposure and we have fixed the white balance. The image does look quite a bit better. However, the subject is still kind of blending in with the rest of the image. Now, how do we make it stand out? Of course, we can't do that with global adjustments. We need to focus on areas locally. And as always, for a problem like this, we are going to make use of masks. There are a few things we can do. First, we want to bring the sky in balance with the rest of the image and along the way, make it more dramatic. I'm going to do this using a linear gradient covering most of the sky like this. Let me activate the overlay so you can see what's going on. And once the mask is set up, I'm going to bring down the exposure quite heavily. This will make the whole sky a lot darker and by making it darker, we get a lot more details in those clouds. So not only will this help, make this boat stand out a little more, but this will also make the sky way more dramatic. We can push things a little further by introducing some contrast and even introducing some clarity to make the clouds pop. That looks awesome. I do think we can make the sky a little colder by bringing down the temperature just a little bit, introducing some more coldness to this image this way. As we brought down the exposure for the whole sky, we did lose a little bit of contrast. I want to fix that using a radial gradient, just covering the brightest parts of the sky like this. And I don't want to change the foreground here. So what I'm going to do is to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. So with this mask, we are only targeting the bright part of the sky, which I want to make a little brighter to add contrast. And to do that, I'm simply going to raise the whites. And again, I'm paying close attention to the histogram to not overexpose too badly, but this is looking very, very good. We can work on the sky some more. So let's use another linear gradient for the very top part right here. And again, I'm just going to bring down the exposure, making the very top even darker. 
So by stacking all these masks, I'm going to create a custom vignetting effect just pretty much for the sky. This will already lead the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image where our subject lies. So now that we have worked on the sky, let's also work on the foreground. I'm going to use another linear gradient for that. I'm roughly covering the very near foreground like this. And what I want to do here is to make use of some extra clarity. I'm going to pump it up all the way. And what this does is it just makes the clouds and the reflection of the water pop. And also we can see a little bit of the jetty down below the water surface. So that's really helpful. Another thing I want to do here, since we have increased the clarity, this leads us to a little bit of underexposure. To fix that, I'm just going to raise the blacks. Perfect. Then let's make use of a radial gradient and just place it right here over the center. What I want to do with this area is to make it slightly brighter since at the moment it's lacking a little bit of contrast. So I'm doing this by increasing the voids, just adding more contrast and further guiding the viewer's eye towards the center of the image where the subject lies. So that's looking pretty good, but still the subject is not standing out enough for my taste. So what we can do at this point is to specifically target the boat. Let's create a new mask and choose select subject. You can see Lightroom is doing a great job at masking out our subject. What I want to do next, since we have a few other things selected in this image, which I would don't want to change is to go again, click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose radial gradient. Then I'm going to just roughly create a radial gradient over our boat. And just like that, we have a perfect selection for the subject. What we can do with this is to bring up the exposure. And this will clearly make the subject stand out more from the rest of the image. However, this area right here at the bottom of the boat is still too dark and we can't really fix it by increasing the exposure more. What I want to do for that is to create another mask, choose a color range mask, and I'm going to select this specific color by clicking right in here. Lightroom is doing a great job at selecting this color. We still have a few other areas selected. So again, I just want to go on those three dots, choose intersect mask with, and this time I'm just using the brush. I want to bring down the brush feather and then just roughly paint over this area right here. With this selection, all we need to do is to bring up the exposure again. And this is what really, really helps separating the subject from the rest of the image, as you can see. Of course, raising the exposure this much will introduce a little bit of noise in this area. However, we can fix that later with the AI noise reduction. That should not be a big deal. What I want to do as well is to bring up the whites making this boat even brighter. And then I want to introduce some saturation, to make the green color really stand out from the rest of the image. Wonderful. And then there's one more mask I want to create and that's a radial gradient. Again, for the very bright part of the sky, just above the tree line. And I'm going to use this to introduce a little bit of glow coming from this area. For that, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And I'm going to drop the clarity and the dehaze. Perfect. Now that's looking so much better. Let us compare the image from before with the basic adjustments to after. You now can clearly see how the subject of this image is clearly standing out with the added brightness and saturation. At this point, we can continue doing just a little bit of color grading. So I want to head into the color mixer tab. In here, let's start with the saturation. I want to make the subject a little more colorful. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the orange tones. Let's also raise yellow. And of course, we want to raise the green tones. The rest of the image could use some more saturation as well. And for that reason, I'm going to bring up the blue tones, which will add some very cool looking saturation to the sky. So that's great. We can also head into the luminance tab. Here, let's bring up the yellow luminance and the green luminance to make the boat stand out even more. Then let's do a bit of split toning in the color grading tab. I just want to affect the shadows here 
giving them a blue color tone, making the image look a slightly bit colder. And let's bring up the saturation. Now taking a look at the histogram, I think the midtones are kind of lacking. So to change that, I'm going to head into the midtones of the split toning settings. I'm not going to add any color, but what I want to do is to make use of the luminance slider, bringing it slightly up and thus increasing the exposure of the midtones, giving us some more contrast. Perfect. And I guess that's pretty much it for the raw adjustments of this image. What we can do is to sharpen it a little bit in the details tab. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and then increase the amount of sharpening. I think that's pretty much it for the tutorial part. I still want to clean up the image since there are some tree branches hanging in and there are a few other things I want to fix. So feel free to stay as I'm going to edit this image in Photoshop real quick. And what I want to do here is to first duplicate that layer in case I mess something up and I have a backup this way. Then I'm using the remove tool right here. Then let's zoom in and just brush over all the tree branches. As I promised earlier, I have cleaned the sensor, but there are still a few sensor spots showing up. So we want to remove them as well later. Just roughly brushing over the tree branches. I also want to get rid of those things because they are kind of ruining the balance of the image. And there's this thing in the foreground, which we need to remove. And I want to remove this tree branch on the jetty as well. Okay, once we have selected everything, we just need to confirm this. Let's see how Photoshop will solve this. That looks a lot better. Then let's zoom in one more time. I'm going to clean up the sensor spots using the spot healing brush. All right, and then there is this strange thing here, which was dirt on the filter I used. So I'm just going to use the glow stamp tool, copy an area from right here, place it over there, just going to roughly paint over that dot. All right, perfect. And that is the finished image. So I hope this Lightroom tutorial was interesting and helpful. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.